Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, dearie oh. me. Mm. Oh, I Let's see what that bad. happened again. Well, welcome oh. back, everybody. Um, oh, and Evie's got, um, I'm going to say, a mug of gin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it past me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you kind of, guys, you've, we've had some wonderful chats coming through. I, I just want to quickly say um, a big shout out to my, my housemate, Becky, who's downstairs making making masks uh, for the household and the, and anybody who else who does oh, it. So if you want to get in contact with, uh, with Becky Evans and see if she will make use of masks, um, I think she will do. I mean, they're beautiful. Uh, so bless her, and she's she's thoroughly enjoying it. So thank you, Bevins. We love you. Mwah. Love, love. Mwah. Yeah. Okay, so um, shall we carry on and play some more Dingy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, we've been having a lot of comments about... Um, about freezing and stuff, I say I deeply apologise. Um, Tinterweb will be Tinterweb, and we'll just try and keep it stable as we can. So I'm very, very sorry about that, um, but we'll see what happens from now on. Okay. So as we left the the adventurers, they had managed to kind of get onto the ledge, pants intact, just <laughs> poor Maggie having a, a a very kind of dodgy descent. Yeah. Oh my Jeez. word. But um I have to say genius thinking from um from Oshi. So mm. thanks Gabby, that was absolutely spot on. <laughs> yeah. Literally literally saved the bacon there. Really did. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so... Smug about it though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saved one of the party members. They owe me like a hundred gold or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> furious. Her, she's her she's gonna call it. Yeah, I should call it in, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, as Tongue sort of landed and gone, uh, kind of, really easy climb, climb, climb. <laughs> <laughs> um, you kind of hear sort of the sounds of something coming over from the other side of you um, as you see three giant rats appear on the other side of the ravine. So let's uh, let's roll in a stiff. Hey, yo. Hang on. Here we go. <laughs> this oh. is great. Oh, what's happened? <laughs> oh, cursed dice. Oh, this is excellent. I can't uh, believe I rolled. A second bet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the rats rolled a nat 20. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lucky rat, that. That's a lucky rat. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> so, literally, before um, any, before you guys could even react, um, this giant rat runs towards you, um, uh, pups. And it's going to go in for a bite. Just normal. 12, does that hit? Uh, now I've got my armor on, I don't believe it does. No, no it so, it goes, so it goes into the back, and literally you just shove it away with your fist, and it kind of stays to the side. Uh, as Tunk kind of looks across as his friends being sort of thought to be bite, bitten by a rat, and the other two rats start to come out from the bubble. Um, so seeing this rat attacking pups, uh, Tunk immediately get ferociously mad. <gasps> um, rage! Uh, he doesn't quite rage oh, okay. um, because, because these are just rats and Tonk thinks he can handle it. Uh, and he moves to there. <laughs> um, Puts himself into the firing line. Yeah, he does. Uh, and um, saying to this rat closest to Nobody hurt doggy. Um, and he two-handed uh, attacks it with his warhammer, which will look. And he swings through and misses completely, and he slams into the ground. You've got your you've got your rage ticked on, by the way, just so you're aware. Oh, apologies, apologies. Uh, anything um, else you want to do? Yeah, as he misses, he uh, he bends down to the rat and goes. That was a warning. 
<laughs> as uh, this giant rat here uh, goes in for a bite on Tunk with advantage. Um, 16, does it hit? 16 hit. And it hits for 6 damage as it jumps onto your arm and grabs on not onto your shoulder, onto your back shoulder. And you just feel it dig in, uh, dig into your um, shoulder blade. And pups, uh, with recently battering away this giant rat in front of you, you now have a an opportunity to respond to the rat. Yeah, so pup is gonna is gonna pull uh, two swords, uh, no, sorry, two weapons, and go for two attack. Okay, so that be um, one one with the right hand and one with one with the off hand, or have you got two handed attacks? Uh, I don't believe I have two handed attacks. No, cool, cool. no proficiencies. No, so it'll be one with proficiency. Uh, which misses, oh, and the man. other one is going to be without proficiency on it, so it will take off two of it. Okay. And that one also misses, unfortunately. As you kind and, of like, and, and, bang, bang, and you kind of miss. miss both. Pop says, seriously now, last warning. Mm. <laughs> uh, and this giant rat here um, is going to go for an attack on Tunk again, with advantage. 14, so that hit? 14 hits. And it hits for four, so you've now got one on, like a bites up, grabs onto your shoulder, and it kind of comes back down again. Uh, Oshi seeing the the lovable King Tunk being kind of overrun by rats, uh, you now have an opportunity to run in. Um, Oshi pulls out her her bow, I think. Mm-hmm. Can, can um, will it go that far? Her oh, yeah, yeah, bow? yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. absolutely. Um, Oshi pulls out her bow and, um, she fires at the first rat that um, bit Tunk. Okay, so this one over here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what I'd probably suggest if you move down to like here, they give you a better line of sight just to make things nice and clear. Sorry, to, to there? Yeah, uh, to there. Yes. Great. So, um, as you've got somebody within five feet of you, um, I think you can do your sneak attack. Okay. Double check that. <gasps> uh, that is right. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll go with it anyway. Uh, if another creature is in five feet of it, yeah, absolutely, you're fine. Um, so you go through... Oh, you just, just did the sneak attack. Okay, Sorry. So what, that's all right. Um, so what you need to do is, yeah, if you tick the sneak attack and then click the short bow, well, it should come up with that. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, so I press the okay. Thirteen. Yep. So that uh, so the the bow, the, the the bolt, no, the arrow. That's the word I was looking for. Kind of <laughs> whistles through the air and slams into the side of the rat, um, knocking it straight off the shoulder of Tunk. And what does that look like? Um, it, it, it yeah, it goes uh, straight through um, his skull, and you see it come out the other side, and he falls to the floor. Um, and um, like wriggles around a bit and um, Oshi says, no more warning. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? Um, I can do something else. <laughs> They're just sort of like if, I... you have, if you have any bonus section, any objects, interactions, any extra movement you want to do. Um... um... No, she's good so far. She doesn't want to. Okay. She doesn't want to peek too early. Okay, and then uh, Baggy, <laughs> uh, Baggy, so um, you've got a rat that's just literally just in front of you here, and you've just seen a rat team take her down from the corner of Tunk's shoulder. Yeah. So I think because she's just seen Oshie's amazing shot, she's going to be well out of that line of fire and just go for the one that's closest to Pops. Nice. Um, and I think she's probably actually going to move a little bit to the well. We should go there. Mm-hmm. Swing at the rat. I'd say if you hands. just a little bit of a hint, if you go to there, you get a flanking, which means you'll get a bit of an advantage. Oh, can you show me that again, sorry? Oh, there. Okay, great. Yeah, because then you'll essentially be flanking. You see what I mean? Perfect. And that will yeah, give you the advantage. Perfect. So, am I rolling an advantage for this? Yeah. Also, just be aware, um, Gabby, I just noticed that, 
make sure you do roll with advantage on your um, sneak attack because you might have critted that one as well. Okay. Just for the future. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Roll with advantage. Yes. Okay. What does that look like? Um. So <laughs> she literally. <laughs> She, she pulls her, her axes back like this mm. and she just goes cuts it diagonally and it ends up in like three pieces oh. on the floor very nice <laughs> you hear it splatter on the floor mm. yeah really nice <laughs> very nice okay so let's see if any of these giant mats are alive no that is dead uh, back round to Tunk and you've got one left over this uh, side. Is that, is that firmly gripped onto me, or is it...? Oh, um, uh, no, it's just bit it up and it's dropped back down again. So, okay, mm. good. Well, Tonk takes his warhammer and, uh, much like Happy Gilmore, goes for a, a, a golf <laughs> swing on it. <laughs> okay. Um, and kind of looking over and nodding to Oshi, he goes, Yeah, no more warnings! Um, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, as he's swinging a miss. Um, he goes, okay, one more warning. <laughs> as you just hear from somebody, like, I don't know, about three miles down the ravine, just goes, strike. Uh, <laughs> okay, great. And uh, pups, um, you've just seen like a right in front of you be completely annihilated. Um, and you see Tunk. Do a nice swing and completely miss. Um, can I stand? Can I come to here and stand over that other rat? Yes, of course you can. Amazing. So that would be that would usually be seen as, as difficult terrain, but you have plenty of food for to do so. Okay, amazing. Even even if they're dead, it counts as difficult terrain. Yeah, there's like bodies on the floor. <laughs> like you had to try to run over bodies. Good to know. Um, all right, so I'm going to war pick it first with my main hand. She missed. Uh, and then, really tired, um, <laughs> then, swing battle axe one more time. Just go, please, please. Yeah, that one hits. As you kind of nick its tail, and it's like a little tail's like squiggling on the floor. <laughs> Can I pick it up with my bonus action? <laughs> You've got to use your bonus action. Oh, yeah, of course I have. Yeah. Um, um, if you want to pick it up, you can do, but I will I will punish you for it, knowing me. Okay, well, <laughs> you're not selling it to me, Joe. Um, <laughs> considering how exhausted and poisoned I am, I think I'll pass. All right, <laughs> so uh, this rat, as you just attacked it, is going to go for the bite on you this time. Uh-huh. Uh, 19 hits and takes a six piercing off you. Yeah. Uh, Oshi, so now your line of sight has been like quite heavily compromised. Um, or well, not? Yeah, yeah, because it's a small rat and you've got a, a small being in front of it as well. So yeah, yeah, it's a bit difficult for you to see. Um, and can she do another sneak attack because it's right next to Pops? Uh, yep. So you can either move in. Yeah. And and go for like a rapier or something like that. Yeah. Or you could probably try and move. Around to try and get a better angle. Um, I think I, I, I think she's gonna go into here. Yeah. Um, and she's gonna take out her rapier, and with all the confidence she's got, she's gonna spin it round in her hand, and then try and stab it. Un How big are these rats? These are quite big. These are like five foot rats. Right, not five okay, foot, she, but they, they take up the gonna... same sort of space as you guys. Okay, fab. And so she's gonna try and. Um, uh, stab it underneath the chin all the way through its skull. Alright, cool. So remember, you're doing this with advantage. Okay. And sneak attack. Oh, and sneak attack. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, it's all there. Alright, okay. cool. So you, just so you know, you annihilate this thing. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> can you tell me what that looks like? Um, yeah, so um, the um, rapier goes up through the skull and because she's Pretending she's cool, calm and collected, but she's actually pretty annoyed. Her hand almost keeps going, and so the top of its skull um, looks like a small um, like chocolate fountain. So blood <laughs> and bits of um, 
bits of skull that have chipped, been like cut through and chipped. <laughs> Trigger warning, anyone, this is gory. Um, <laughs> or coming out and fountaining out and, and a lot of blood is uh, dripping through her hand. But she doesn't say anything to anybody else about it. Okay. That's the murder podcast. She, she's she's like, <laughs> yeah, well, but she's just, she's like transfixed. She's like pointed onto this, onto this rat. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Yeah. Hooray. It's over, uh, thank God. The gory details are over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you completely annihilate these these giant rats. <laughs> I, I, think, I think sort of seeing that pups is just sick. Moves his lunch on the floor. <laughs> So, so good. And, uh, and you kind of turn and you see the staircase going down um, to your right-hand side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Oshi. Mm. And um, can Oshi use her dark vision to kind of have a look around and see if there's any traps? Um, I think as you... I mean, your dark vision's always on, of course. Um, so, yeah, you can, do, you can do a perception check and see if you can see if anything is sort of down there. Any dangers? Yeah, it seems to be okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, yep. Uh, just before we go, um, you want to throw up? I mean, and I mean, I'm thing? fine, but I, some of you look a little tired. Maybe we could have a little short rest for a moment. Just I, I can see some flagging amongst, <laughs> amongst the group. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can heal everyone first a little, and then we can maybe have a, uh, just that. Just over there looks very comfortable. Mm, I was going to ask if everybody's okay. Would anybody like any water? <laughs> yes, that would be that would be wonderful. Maybe after just had a little just a little nap. Okay. <laughs> so this is good. So it gives us an opportunity to do some. Um, what's the word? Um, like healing and things like this. So at short rests, you're able to roll a number of hit dice equal to kind of your level. Um, so at the moment, you've guys got one hit dice you can roll. And you'll see on your character sheets that you'll have like a, a hit die written on there. It's usually like a D8 or a D10 or D12 or D6. So you can roll those and that will give you some hit points back. Um, um yeah. Wait. Uh, is it on normal or... A Oh, yeah. Normal, yeah, when you click it, it will just roll it for you. There you go. Um, um, be before I have the rest, Joe, I'm going to give myself a little a little lay on hands because they're going to come back with my short rest. So I'm going to give myself some guaranteed hit points first. Yeah, sure. And then roll my hit dice. Okay. Whoa, Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. There we go. Mm -hmm. Very well done, guys. So, yeah, oh. so you get e e or e can like add that to your rolls, unless you don't need to. So, Gabby, you don't need to roll yeah. anything. So we'll ignore that roll. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, also, Baggy, if you didn't want to roll that dice, you didn't have to. It's up to you. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm obviously my hit point yeah. max. Yeah, so you don't necessarily well. have to roll that. No. So it's up to you, though. You can take it if you want to. I've, I've taken the one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, give, it, give it a track record this week. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So Tunk, that gives you an extra five, and um, yep. I think Pups, that brings you back up to, um, to your max. Yeah. Cool. Um, anything else you want to do on your short rest? Do I recover any exhaustion? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, no. No, um, no you decided to use your lay on hands to help somebody else, which is very valiant of you, I must say. I must say. But you could have used that to get rid of your poison, but never mind. Um, I, I, I can do that now, right? I what? Have you? Do you? Does that happen on a short rest or does it happen on a long on a rest? On a short rest. Okay, so you can put it back. I can double check that if you want. Should be on your on your character sheet. It'll, take, it'll let you know about uh, your lay on hands. Um, 
Meanwhile, um, Tunk kind of moves over to Washi and just uh, kind of is laughing through a, a very loud Tunk whisper, going, <laughs> the mouse is fucked, Tunk was food. <laughs> <laughs> um, he giggles at Tunk as she uses some of the water to wash the blood off her hands. Very nice. Um, let's have a and... You see, there's there's evidence of like like okay, the the stones and stuff. Yeah, I feel like Baggy's sort of gone over and investigated those. Had a little look to see if any of them are worth maybe keeping. Could she could she maybe stick a couple in her pocket? Yeah, a couple sure. Couple of nice absolutely. round ones. She might yeah. want to use them for later. Yeah, absolutely. Take as many as you. Like. I'm gonna take five. <laughs> Okay, I'm not seeing anything about laying hands. Uh, I'm struggling to uh, to find, or do you, shall I, rather than do the other lay on hand, shall I just take the dice? Do, 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 do. Do that, I um, we could ask, we could ask the chat group. Ask the chat. Ask the chat. Think? So uh, I think I think ask the chat. So I think Kurt is probably the person who's who's chatting the most. So hey Kurt. Yeah. Um and oh, shout out to Kurt. Big shout out Kurt's to Kurt Clark. From the US of A right now. Really? Yes, uh... Watching from the US of A. Love you, Kurt. <laughs> um so, yes, yeah, so if anyone could pop onto the chat um, and just say if you think Leon if you know if Leon Hands comes comes out on the uh, replace should we take a long rest, says Kurt. First paragraph. There you go. I go where that Kurt is right there. Himself. You know, he is right there, right at the top. They completely missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thanks, so, no, no, you do not have them. They are gone. They are zero. Zero. There we go. Zero? You've got none left. No, I only used one. I used one, did you? Did you heal somebody one? I, I healed Baggy once. For how many hit points? For five. That's five. zero. Is that how it works? With a pool, you can restore a total number of hit points equal to the Paladin level times five. So you can restore that many. So you have like a, a pool of a certain amount. So let's say if you were level 20, you would have 100 um, hit points worth of lay on hands to play around with. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. Cool. Right. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much, Kurt. That's keeping you, Kurt. keeping pups down since uh, fourteen eighty two. Five gold pieces. <laughs> Justice for pups. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So, uh, to the same school as uh, as Oshi because he now wants five gold pieces. <laughs> nice, Kurt. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> So, um, if I could give inspiration to people in the community, I would. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so when you look down and you saw that there's, it looks as if it's fine, what you see is a, a fortress emerging in the darkness. Uh, it's subterranean, sort of citadel through. Though impressive, seems long forgotten. If the, wind, wind, if the lightless windows, cracked crestations and leaning towers are any indication, all is quiet where the cold breeze blows up from below, bringing the scent of dust and face trait of rot. As you look down these stairs, this rickety five-foot-wide stairs, as it leads all the way down to the citadel itself. Oh, all clear. Dim the <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Great. Uh, do you guys make your way down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's. Uh... Great. Uh, there we go, it's loaded now, thank Christ. Okay, zoom out a bit, give you guys a bit of space. Okay, so you come down um, 
to the kind of like the beginnings of this crumbled courtyard and the stairs sort of empties into a small courtyard uh, apparently on top was once a crenellated basement oh there you go crenellated to it that is uh, the buried citadel has sunk so far into the earth that the battlement is now the level with the surrounding floor. The floor stretches away to the north and south, composed layer of layers, treacherous, crumbled masonry, which reaches uh, to an unknown depth. To the west looms the surviving structure of what must have been the sun, the citadel itself. The tower stands on the west side of the courtyard. Uh, a little, little scan around to see if uh, anything looks in ward. Yeah. Okay. So you want to do a little little check? Yeah, a little, little, little check. <laughs> Bless you, Dan. Oh, my <laughs> word. Uh, so, first thing first, um, yeah. the debris looks completely stable in every single way. <laughs> Um, this place looks fairly safe, um, and you're like, yep, it's a great entrance way to a beautiful, wonderful, welcoming visit. Yeah, it, look, it, it looks clear through here. <laughs> and you take a step forward. Can you do a dex, uh, can you do an acrobatics check for me? Yeah. Uh, as you kind of walk um, and you, your foot gets stuck in a, in a, a rock, and you're like, oh, as it slips away from you, as you realise the floor is not particularly safe to kind of walk along. Uh, the, uh, I meant out there was safe, in here, definitely not safe. Uh, <laughs> be careful, everyone, don't want you falling down something, you'd look very silly. <laughs> uh, so, um, you guys go to walk across it. Yeah. Um, oh, go on. Can can Ashi do a perception check? Ashi Sota. Um, oh. I think I think you kind of you've, you've kind of gone with the trusted words so far. Oh, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> this is the thing. I've allowed you guys to kind of double up <laughs> on your roles up to this point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but ideally, you kind of trust the person that's kind of made made the check in the first place. So, but if you say that I've seen that it's not safe now, and then I've communicated yes. back to people, you've, you've communicated that now, so everyone knows it's a loose rock. Okay. Be careful. Okay, so everybody who walks, everybody who walks forward, can you take a, a de an acrobatics check for me? Oh. Oh, oh, oh my god! god. Oh, the most acrobatic. It's lucky you didn't fail by five or more, to be honest. So, um, literally, all of you get stuck in the rocks and you're unable to move. Um, so, can we do a strength? Uh, strength check, a strength save to see if you can get yourself out. I'm, I'm by the end. Am I able to help anyone who needs help? I think you're too busy trying to get yourself out at the moment, and everyone's stuck, so you can't really help anybody. Oh, okay. But you can do your strength check though. I didn't do acrobatics. I didn't move forwards. So I sort of just sort of slumped while everyone else went past. Um, yeah. So uh, let's do the. But you're still stuck. So you want to get out yeah. or not? Right. Strength. Great, so um, Baggy, Pops yes! and, and Tunk, <laughs> all of you guys get out um, and you're able to kind of get yourself free, um, but unfortunately Oshie's sort of still stuck inside the rocks. Um, well, um, I think uh, ba Baggy realising that obviously uh, Oshie is stuck and knowing that she kind of owes her life now to Oshie. Uh, she decides yeah. to go over and, and kind of see see what she can do. And she mm -hmm. asks her, how, like, where is she stuck? Is it your legs? Your arms? Um, and it's Oshu Sota's front um, right foot that is stuck. But she, it takes her a minute to <laughs> admit defeat and tell Baggy. And she says, I, I, you know... I, it, it may be okay. I, I'll try a couple of things first, but she knows she's not really going to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to so retry I mean, them? 
Is it strength again? Strength save, yeah. As you find it, you're completely stuck in this thing, actually. Um, and you feel that the rock is starting to slip under your foot. It's mm -hmm. like pushing you towards the ravine. If anybody has... Um, so Tunk goes over to Washi um, and... Uh... He uh, he attempts to to pull her out of the of where she is. Okay, cool. So let's do um, an athletics check from you then. Great. And he just like pop. <laughs> it's kind of pops her out. Um, you need you nearly lose a boot. We've all had that feeling. Oh, yeah. The boot nearly gets lost, but uh, mm. no, you keep the boot, and, and it's absolutely yeah. fine. As you kind of make your way up onto this courtyard itself. And you kind of come in to the courtyard. I'm just going to pop you guys there. Uh, so Tonka pulled uh, Ashi out. Uh, before she's able to say thank you, Tonk goes, uh, no, no, Tonk knows, and hands her another gold coin. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, nine to go, Tonk, thank you. <laughs> 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 so you kind of make your way onto this, yeah, this this um, courtyard. So it's a twenty by thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, twenty by thirty. Um, sort of cracked and broken away um, courtyard that leads towards a door, which you can see over here. So they were in a kind of a newish area. So if anyone wants to have a check and have a look around, uh, is this stone all around us? It is stone, yes. Um, so Tonk would have, having seen the stone and, and being slightly enamoured by it, um, he's going to attempt to kind of uh, look at the origin of the stonework. <laughs> would that be an intelligence role, Joseph? I think or it would an be. investigation? I think it'd be, um, you'd use your stone cutting tools and we'll do it as oh, an intelligence. Okay. Do it as a intelligence because you like history essentially is what you're looking at. Perfect. Now this is where it's going to come in. It's going to be difficult because whenever I make an intelligence or history check related to the origin of stonework, you are considered proficient in the history skill and add double to your proficiency bonus to the check. Yep. Um, so we I'm currently add on. Four. You currently okay, on what? Cool. I've got negative three for history. So um, yeah, you add you add four to that. And here we go. <laughs> Solid seven. <laughs> 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 uh, great. Uh, yeah, this is an uh, old ancient stonework. Cool. All right. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, you see, this is being very, very old st uh, stonework. You. Um, um, well. Yep. Uh, and I'm just going to say that you also see behind you that the uh, the masonry is is debris, is makes it very slippery to move around. Okay. Which you already need. Um, okay, well, Tunk going to tell the group that then kind of realises that the group might already know that it's old and just goes, Dash, silly Tunk, the group already knows. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so then you kind of, anybody else want to have a look around? Or are you going to march towards the door? Um, Oshi, Oshi Sota. Looks around the group and says, stand back, stand back, I'll have a look, seems the rest of you can't seem to see anything. And so is that perception? Yes, please. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Yes. Very, walk very walk well talk the talk. He backs it up. Okay. What you see is a 10-foot square that looks dodgy as hell. That is right in front of you guys. Uh, as you see that there is, uh, looks as if there's a trap door uh, that goes across the width of the um, courtyard itself. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, she said, turns to the group and tells them what she's just found. Do you think it's a trap? She says, yes. 
-hmm. And um, can she use her action to do the finding traps thing? So you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to do here? Do you want to kind of properly Could investigate you, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, yep. So let's do an investigation check. Um, so you can properly look at it. And if you want to try and disarm it, you probably use your thieves tools to do so. Oh, okay. Cool, thank you. So investigation. Oh. oh. So we'll take the first roll. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you see that this is, um, well, you know it's a trap door. Mm -hmm. And it looks as if there's no way past it. Um, you're going to have to try and disarm it. Um, just a question for Joe. Is that 10 foot square like that? No. No, you, you don't know anymore from that investigation. As far as you're aware, mm -hmm. it goes across the whole thing. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let me just go for that. Um, yeah, because of the investigation, you don't know what size it is now at all. Okay. Um, well, then Tonk uh, turns to uh, Pups, who's the smallest, and says, Does Doggy want to fly? Uh, ordinarily, uh, Tonk, I think that would be a great idea, but uh, maybe maybe we should let uh, Oshi see if. Uh, she can do a few little bits of jiggery pokery first. <laughs> but otherwise, otherwise, absolutely. Any other day, any other day, <laughs> flying, yes. <laughs> uh, perhaps, pups, if um, you know my my jiggery pokery doesn't work, then you you you'll fly. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, before that though, I've got these. And Baggy reaches into into a, a bag that she's got on her hip, and she pulls out five quite substantially sort of heavy pebbles that she's got earlier on at the top. Mm. And I think she'd like to just sort of test it, test the trap door by just sort of chucking them on mm. to see see if it opens or anything. Cool. Um, so I think as you throw them, I mean, you've been carrying them around, right? Yeah. They're not heavier than the person? No, they're not. No, so you throw them on and it, it just sort of bounces across. Ah. Um, Oshi, you can almost hear uh, hear through the darkness as Oshi smirks at that, um, and she does. She uses some of her thieves' tools to have a look at the um, trap door. Great. So what you do is you click on the thieves' tools, and it'll ask you what ability you want to use. So that would be dexterity. Thieves' tools. Uh, got to head to a meeting, everyone. See you later, Kurt. Oh, bye, See Kurt. Kurt. Bye. Goodbye, <laughs> Kurt. Um, so I press on tools proficiency. I press thieves tools. Yeah. Uh, it should ask you what and um, what skill you want to put to it, and it'll be dexterity. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah, nailed it. So literally, what you do is you just pull out like a small blade that you've got mm -hmm. in your pocket, and you literally you just go. And you just jam a blade into it, mm -hmm. and it kind of stops it from from opening again. So it's now completely solid. Mm -hmm. It's totally solid. We can uh, you can fly now, pups. <laughs> you, you haven't disabled it. Oh, I have, but. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh, may, maybe, maybe, maybe later, Tunk. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, you can you can help help out this friend in a in a different way a little bit later. Yeah. Um, and the expression on Tunk's face is as if Pups just the worst insult that he could have possibly given, and Tunk just goes, "Oh, okay." And uh, and he and he starts to walk towards the door with his kind of head low and his arms like if they could drag on the floor, they would be. Oh, mate. I, I think seeing Pup just sort of like throws himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, and you go over to the door. Okay, so the door itself is um, it's a stone door. Um, it looks standard dory. 
Standard Dory. Uh, well, Tops... Let me just uh, top... like, make sure there isn't anything else on it. I just give you two secs. Ah la la, checking through. No, that's great. Okay, yeah, so just look at the big door. It's a, um, it's a, it's a wooden door, my apologies. A wooden door, okay. Um, well, Tunk puts his hand on the on the handle, doesn't open it, but looks back to Oshie and goes, should Tunk open? Um, and can Oshie have uh, try and pick the lock? Or yeah, actually, sure. they haven't even tried, have they, to open the door? Maybe it's not locked. Can we investigate? Yeah, sure. So Ashi goes and stands next to Tunk and investigates the door. <laughs> um... Yeah, and um, so the door is shut for sure. <laughs> um, nice. Uh, you can't see if it's locked or not. Okay. Tunk um, attempts to open the door, getting a slightly bit impatient. Okay, and the door opens. Um, as you can, as you kind of, as you realise that you're opening into that first tower, so like a tower shell. Um, delighted with the fact that Tunk was able to open the door. Uh, he smiles at Ashi and goes, Tuck did it! And then walks into the room. <laughs> um, and he'll step to, to here. Okay, great. So as you come into the room, um, this circular area is cobbled with cracked granite. Granite? Granite. Upon which are sprawling bodies of four goblins, apparently slain in combat. Old corpse stands with its back against the western wall. The spear that killed it, uh, killed it still skewing it and holding it upright. Three wooden doors lead uh, from this area. A hollow tower with loose masonry reaches 30 feet into the air, uh, but the intervening floors and stairs are gone, except for a couple of crumbled edges. So you can see that there's a door over here, there's a door over here. And there's a door, obviously, that you just came through. Um, Tonk shouts back to the group and goes, Doggy, don't come in. There's dead doggies in here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take inspiration, please? <laughs> um, hearing that, I think I think Pops is gonna is gonna come in. Um, and where, where are the, are we here? Yeah. This just sort of solemnly starts saying a prayer and, um, takes out his incense and starts doing a little, uh, a little prayer for rest for the, uh, for the three dead doggies. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Do you want to do a religion check on that? Just to see if they go to the right place. Yes. <laughs> Mm. Oh no. I've been doing so well so far. Um, <laughs> even Mama. with these rights, to Mama. <laughs> even to <laughs> blood for the blood god, uh, even for even without that score, these bodies have been completely mutilated. Um, these, they're just not really bodies anymore. Um, does anybody, you can kind of see that there's some runes behind one of the bodies. Um, mainly the one that's been pinned to the wall. Which um, one is that? It's a little, 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 one called Stand Still. Let's say this one. Oh no, hang on. No, this one over here. This one over here. Um, and you see that just behind it, there is some runes sort of scraped on the wall with goblin blood. Okay. Um. Um, Tunk will, curiosity will get the better of him and she'll approach it. Um, 
to look a closer inspection on the uh, at the blood. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's have a look. What languages do you speak? Uh, barely any, uh, but also <laughs> Dwarvish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you don't recognize this language at all. Um, okay, well, he'll he'll dip his finger in some of the blood of the goblin and then just write Tonk <laughs> on the wall as well. <laughs> very, very nice. Uh, orc. I'm just checking the guy's languages, see if you guys recognize anything. Or she might, actually, think about it. Yes, great. Oshi, um, you recognize it as Draconic. Mm-hmm. Um, so Oshi enters the room, enters um, the room, stands in front of the body, takes the knife out and moves out the way as it falls down. And she reads and, the... Yeah, you read it and it says, yeah. um, Ashadelon, or Ashadelon. Okay. So that's A A S H A R D A L O N Ashadelon. Okay. And does does or she know what this means? Perhaps let's do a history check. smashing these rolls today yeah and um yeah so asher dalon is um one of the like, oldest dragons probably of all time um, we lost you there for a sorry, second Joe. okay let me say it one more time um so asher dalon is like one of the greatest and oldest dragon red dragons of all time um it kind of appears all over the Forgotten Realms and all over different planes, in fact, um, known to kind of be obsessed with age, wanting to stay uh, alive as long as possible. They're kind of famous for having like what looks like a winged humanoid on their chest. Um, but it looks as if like these runes are, um, although scraped in either with blood, you can actually see that this is scraped into the stonework itself. And this this is a really ancient runes that have been scraped in. Probably when the, the citadel itself was still above above ground. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Ashdown um, so is like a big, big, big dragon. Okay. And so it's not um it's not written in blood, it's it's into the wall. A bit of both, actually, to be honest. So, okay. like, it's almost as if the, the wall has been there and then someone's filled it in with the goblin blood. Okay. Um, Oshi Sota tells the group this. Um, has, uh, has Pups um, got any uh, recollection of this from a, from a religion standpoint? Oh, okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's do religious. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck oh, me. Even with the disadvantage, you fucking nail it. Nice um, one. So, literally, um, you, it all clicked into place. The holy site of the Red Dragon Cult. And you realise that this is this is that holy site. This is the site of um, the Red Dragon Cult that worshipped Ashadelon. Um, which you think could be its original purpose. Um, as almost like a cathedral. And uh, the understanding is this is what it used to be rather than this is what it is. Yeah. Because you also you know that the Dragon Cult hasn't really been seen. Not Asher Delon's Dragon Cult hasn't really been seen for a while. I'm just waiting for the D&D &D nerds to kill me on that line. Um, yeah. But yeah, you haven't seen it. We haven't seen any sort of activity from them for a long time. Um, Tons turn to uh, Pups and uh, very meekly say uh, Tonk is sorry for getting mad at Doggy. Can Tonk please see what the other doggies have? Of, of course, Tonk. Just uh, just be careful, okay? 
okay. And, and Tonk will start to loot the uh, the nearest uh, goblin. Yeah, the bodies have been looted already. Um, is there anything even that you think Tonk would enjoy? <laughs> the only thing that's there is that spear that was pinning the original goblin, but no, I mean, there's bones and body bits and stuff like this, but Okay, Tonk will take a, a bone out of the goblin, throw it across the room and go, Doggy, fetch! <laughs> That's so horrible. I, I think maybe, Tonk, we should let these doggies sleep. Okay. Doggy sleep and he pats the head of the dead <laughs> goblin. Oh, my God. <sighs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Pops just does a, a quick um a, a quick prayer to uh, uh Maglubia for forgiveness for this desecration. <laughs> um w- w- was it a spear he was stabbed in with? The the, the goblin was stabbed against the wall. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, Oshie still has this in her hand and she pockets it. Very cool. helpful. Um, cool. So, yeah, so other than that, you see that there is two other doors. Um, unless you guys want to have a look around the space, have to see what else is here. Um, I think uh, Baggy was a little investigation. See if okay. there's anything else apart from the doors. Okay, so uh, are you looking around or are you touching stuff? Um, yeah, I, I feel like she's probably she's probably maybe rather maybe looking at the at the floor, like moving stuff out of the way, like okay. rubble and bits, just to see if there's anything, okay. anything, any other markings on the floor, maybe. Okay, yep. So let's do a perception check. Perception. Yep. Okay. Round room. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of blood. So she sort of turns to everyone and is like, I think a lot of a lot of goblins may have died here. <laughs> um Tunk then confidently approaches the door over here. Yeah. Um and and is it is it a can can he inspect what kind of door it is? Yep, sure. So you uh, see it's a wooden door. Very similar okay. to the one you saw at the front. Okay, well then, uh, having gained the confidence of the previous door he opened like a boss, uh, he's going to try and open that one as well. Yeah, so. And it opens for you. Um, he turns back to the group and kind of gestures. Uh, to come over um, and go. It's dark, it's dark. And you see um, a room, like a ruined chamber, um, is completely empty apart from rocky debris. Uh, he turns back to the group and goes, There's no doggies. Okay, uh, I'll try can another you, door. Oh. I think you can see from where you are. Let me check your sight. Yeah, you just about to see it. Uh, you can see that there are um, a couple, there's some doorways in there. So you can see one the door that goes to the north, over like here. And you can see a doorway that goes to the south. Yeah. And you see at the, just about at the end of the corridor, you see there's another door. Cool. Um, but he's going to take, uh, he'll say back to the group, there's three doors. Three doors in there. Um, I think back. Do, do, they, do they look like they're open or do they look locked? No, Tonk will check and he sprints. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Store. 
and and let and tries to open it. Right. So you open the door. Um, delete. Great. Um, let me see. Yeah, great. So um, you see this tiny little room. Um, this sort of stone reliefed carved door ceiling uh, that kind of closes the door. You kind of push the door open, um, but you notice as you go through it, you see you see a dragon like fish swimming in water as you open the door. Um, oh, actually, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm going to ignore that rule. So, uh, this 10 foot square uh, chamber is hewn with stone and it contains an upright keg fashioned with an iron rod, rusted pipes. Um, Rusted pipes lead from the keg as it kind of goes across the floor and digs into the ground itself. So you, in the corner you see this kind of like big keg, big rusted keg uh, here. Cool. And I can see the fish in there, can I? No, it's like a big like metal, metal keg. Okay. Uh, well, then he's going to turn and try and open the one behind him. Okay. So that door, I'm just checking if it's locked, but I didn't do that this time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cool. So you open this door and it is a completely empty, empty room. Nothing but like rock and debris. Um, and he then finally runs over to the western. Mike, go and see how, <laughs> how Tongue is doing. Okay, so you kind of get to hit, you kind of look through the door and you see Tonk going for that last door. Uh, have you found anything, Tonk? Uh, the door is open. Is it safe? Oh, uh, Tonk wasn't asked to figure that out. <laughs> And then he attempts to open the, the third and final door. Okay. You doing this loudly? Uh, well, he he's been told to open doors, so he's got he doesn't think he's doing it silently. <laughs> okay. So you open a door, and this leads into like a very big room. You realise it's a very much better lit room. I think no, it's a completely dark room again, but there's not actually dark vision. Um. But you, you see it's a much bigger room than the others that you're about to look into. Okay, well, he doesn't go in. He just then sprints back to Baggy and goes, yeah, doors are open. <laughs> and uh, I think Baggy sort of breathes aside to see if she returns uh, and says, okay, cool, well, 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 well done, well done, Tank. Uh, did, did you see, did you see anything in particular? Yeah. What, what did you see? Uh, there's small room, there's, there's a bigger room, and there's really big room. A really big room? Yeah, really big. Come on, let me show. Yeah, let's go. So, time to so, the way. <laughs> back. And she runs in the largest room. God, look, this is the big room. And as, he, as he walks in, you just hear. <laughs> as this kind of like small um, cobalt in the corner is sort of crying his eyes out. Uh, it's this crudely sort of executing symbols and glyphs scribbed into a bright green dye decorate this large and irregularly shaped crumbling chamber. A large pit in the centre shows evidence of a recent fire. Uh, a metallic cage in the middle of the southern wall contains a gaping hole that stands empty. A small wooden bench draped with green cloth is next to the cage and several small objects rest upon it. The bedroll lays near the wooden bench and the sound of whimpering comes from inside it. As you see, yes, this this creature crying on the floor. <laughs> um, Tunk will go beside it and go, "Why are you crying, little doggy?" 
Um, and he just goes, oh, they took, uh, they took it. <laughs> what did they take, doggy? <laughs> they took the clan's dragon. We lost it. <laughs> Wretched goblins. I hate them. They stole cl Calcrix. That's how you say that. C A L C R Y X. Calcrix. 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 Let's go with Calcrix. It's like, ah, oh, they stole Calcrix, our dragon. Oh. And um, when, when did this happen? <sighs> Not a week ago. And he looks like just whimpers. Um, <laughs> and you kind of realise there's like bites and scratches all over him. This is obviously from the dragon itself. Um, I think, Oshi, Oshi, are you in the room yet? Trailing slowly, quite far behind. Okay, cool. She's maybe just stood in the doorway. <coughs> okay. Um, so as you stand in the doorway, you see across to the... Um, you cross to the cage and you see that it's written in draconic it says here be dragons mm -hmm. um, um, but he just cries and cries and cries um tonk bends down to the uh to the kobold and goes my name tonk what's your name <laughs> me poo oh that's what Doggy did earlier as well. <laughs> and he looks over and sees the goblin. He's like, ah, ah, and he sort of like grabs, tries to grab anything he can find, any sort of stick or like blade or something uh, to try and defend himself against against the goblin. It, 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 it's okay. It's okay. What's? Uh, I'm your friend. Yeah. Friend. Goblins are not friends of kobolds. But uh. Pups can be friends of 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 me poos. Okay, let's do a persuasion. So I think you're being honest, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, let's do a persuasion. It's gonna be quiet. It's, been... <laughs> it's like, don't you dare talk to me, you little devil! And he kind of like lurches forward to try and attack you, but then kind of bumps into a baggy and you know, then jumps back. It's like, uh, can't even kill a goblin. <laughs> I think um, Baggy kind of sort of kneels, kneels, kneels close to him and, and says something like, um, it's okay, it's okay. He, he, he's a good goblin. Um, but look, maybe, maybe, maybe we could help. Do you know how many goblins there were? People don't know. But your your trail will know. A meep will take you to your trail. She's that, our leader. If you make nice, uh, I'll give you get you safe passage. But you promise to be nice. We promise to be nice, don't we, everyone? Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe promise. if you promise to rescue the dragon, she make nice to you. Answer questions. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. We we could do that. But uh, he should cover his face. And he points over to to pups. Uh, pups sort of is a little hurt by this, but um, for the for the sake of the greater good, he uh pulls up his uh his bear hood. I'm just do 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 um cool uh, so yeah so um he sees that you are you are hurt by this and he says we have been at war with goblins for a long time over this territory you should be surprised I even talk to you you devil 
all golems? Just the tribe to the north. Do I look like I'm from the tribe to the north? Doesn't matter. You stole dragon. Cover your uh, face. Tonk waves his finger at, at uh, Mipu and says, we will be nice to you, you will be nice to Doggy. He's like, oh, okay, okay. Do, do, do Kobold speak Draconic? They do, yeah. Okay. Um, Oshi goes to Mipu and says, and says uh, lead us to her then, in Draconic. <gasps> ah. Someone who speaks the mother tongue, he says, back in Draconic. Yes, take us. Of course. She's not messing, said, she's getting annoyed. Yeah, and he sort of bows down to her, like, meekly. Like, of course, of course. Um, and he starts taking you guys uh, through. So we're going to take you, um, he takes you through this way first. I'm just going to grab you guys. Okay. Um, and he, as he's walking through... Um, or you can hear, uh, only actually, only Oshi can hear this. Um, is he shouts, um, tickle corn as he's walking through? Um, and he comes around this direction over here, um, continuing to, to shout tickle corn. Uh, mm -mm. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this so I can move you guys without getting stuck. Like, okay, that's better. Let's do that. Um, as you kind of come up, and as you reach this kind of northern port, he's like, turns around and he's like, shh. Don't annoy the big kobolds. Mm -hmm. They will kill you. Understood? Yes, understood. Good. Oh, she says this and then turns to the group and whispers the same thing. Okay, cool. Um, as you kind of go through into this great hall, um, and it's a, a double row of relief carved marble columns go all the way along the length of this room. And they uh, depict all of these different like uh, dragons um, being kind of like heroic um, as you kind of go through the center you realize that you're surrounded by like three uh, cobalt elites and it's gonna put some cobalt voices on like cobalt voices <laughs> and you kind of like you walk through and Meepo is like his head goes low as he walks through and he's like Careful, careful. He's like, tickle corn, tickle corn, tickle corn, tickle corn, tickle corn. And he's like walking through. And you kind of make your way down to the kind of the bottom. And down the bottom you see um, one kobold, which is this one. Um, he's sitting on a throne, a stone throne. Um, da, 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 da. And a short throne stands near the west wall, constructed of fallen bits of masonry stacked together uh, on an old altar. On top of the altar uh, sits a variety of small items. The portion of the altar that serves as the throne's back features a carving of a rearing dragon. The metallic key is held firmly in the dragon's draw, jaws. And you see this kind of like... Um, Cowboys up dressed in white, sitting down on it. It's like, yes. What do you want, disgraced one? The meepo's like, I found them. They were they they came into the, to the cage. They said that they would help. In what way will they help? You, big one. Kind of like she gestures towards you, Maggie. Um, I think she's a little bit unnerved by by this. 
but she just sort of respectfully nods and says, yes. Why do you come to my empire? Oh, well, um, actually, we're here because we, we want to help. We've heard that there's been a lot of trouble with Bob uh, in, this, in this land, so yes. we're, we're just trying to see what we can do, really. Yes, goblins. <coughs> it's kind of like spits. It's like they are, they've been attacking, attacking us for months. But it wasn't until the outcast came. And the goblins, they take his fruit. Dragon thieving goblins. Ah! <coughs> and she's on spits again. They so, are his servants. So the outcast. Who, who is the outcast? He lives below. He lives below? Uh, below us now? Yes. Oh. And, uh, why, why, why is he down there? I have no idea. Stupid question. He came I, down, I... what, 12, 13 years ago. Ah. So, apologies. I, I, I didn't realise that was a silly, silly question. Um, of course you didn't, because so, you're stupid, stupid, poor person. Oh, she looks at its rings. Oh, she steps forward and speaks in draconic. What, what was her, what was this, um, Colbot's name again? Uh, Eustrail. Do we know their name yet? Yeah, Eustrail. Um, and Oshi speaks to Eustrail and says, with all due respect, um, we are here to help you. The least you could do is respect us and help us back. Hmm. Very true. A snake that speaks like a dragon. But how are you here to help? We will find your red dragon. Our red dragon? Mm. I haven't seen a red dragon here for thousands of years. We were once worshipped here long ago. I think you're talking about our dragon. Your dragon? Which was not a red dragon? No. They are a young dragon, a, a wymling dragon. A wymling dragon. Small. Would you like the, a small wymling dragon? Of course, but they are white. I would love to see them back. Will you do this we for may, us? We may be able to help with that, yes. I will grant you a reward if you are successful. Um, what shape would the reward take? Mm. We'd have to wait until you return. Yes? Return with the white dragon. Of course. If you return with nothing, I will kill you on the spot. Tonk kind of steps forward and goes, Hey, we've been nice to you. You've been nice to us. Yes. <laughs> Very true, dwarf. Very true. Fine. I will, I will give you Meeple to accompany you if you wish. Meeple, my friend. Thank you. Um, Oshi sort of nods, not quite agreeing to the terms of the bargain, but wants to finish the conversation. Of course. Of course. I know that you adventurers tend to have lots of questions. The others do. The others? Yes. They came to fight the goblins and never returned. I see. Uh, who, who were they? I no idea. Some trumped up adventurers believing they were doing good in this world. They failed. 
uh, how many of them were there? Remember? Ooh. I believe that there was four. Oh. Yes. One in shining armor. For sure. Did, um, did one of them happen to have a pet frog by any chance? <laughs> You're talking of the outcast. He lives below. Ah. He grows the fruit, you see. He gives it to the goblets. <laughs> Oh, he grows the fruit. Ah, are you talking about the uh, the apples? Yes. The apples. Yes. The horrible, horrible white apples. And the beautiful red ones. And the beautiful red ones. Hmm. So. Oh. Sorry, go on. No, carry on. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I've heard of this person, but, but, uh, uh, his name's Alec? She like, keep spitting. And everyone's like, <laughs> everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we, we've heard of, we've heard of Alec, actually. Um, on with the apples, so, so, uh, maybe, if you'll allow it. Uh, could we possibly go and go and talk to him? Give him a piece of armor. Hmm. Well, maybe if you come back with the dragon, I will give you something that will help your journey. What? <laughs> You'll find out when you bring back the dragon. Like I said to the snake one. How can we trust that you will definitely give us a reward on our return? And uh, and literally, there's like a gasp. <gasps> as I was like, you question my honesty. The honesty well, of a kobold. How very dare you! Um, and on on the kobold asking, do we trust? Uh, do we question his honesty? Can Tonk do an insight check to see if he does question the honesty? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, like directly, as if Tonk's been asked to question himself. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. Because does Tonk <laughs> question the honesty? Uh, I don't think you, you do. You, I think you believe them. Because okay. I think I think it's sort of like you've seen people you seem to think people be desperate, and they seem to be a little bit desperate. Cool. Um, well, then Tong kind of nudges Baggy and goes, "I think they're telling the truth." Okay. So you, you should listen to the the wide one there. We have our families here. We have our young, our old. We want to survive. That is all. Well, I can show you the pathway to their usurped, occupied territory. So we may get our dragon back. <laughs> and she's like, I like this one. He's nuts. And she kind of pulls him. She pulls a ring off her finger and like throws it at you. Um, he quickly gathers it up and hands it off to Ashi and goes, only eight more. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you sort of take the ring. Oh, she takes the ring and hides it on her person. So I could show you, I mean, Nico could show you the direction. Do we have a deal? Yes. We we have a deal. We have a deal, yes. Good. 
Unless there's any further questions, I would like to return to sitting on my chair looking busy. That's okay. That's fine by us. Um, Meepu, lead the way. Um, as he takes you down the corridor. And he's like bowing backwards as he does. He's like, oh, oh, you're so great. You're so amazing. You're the best. Oh, no other dragon is like you, like the dragon you're supposed to be. Oh, exalted. She's like, oh, yes, 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 shut up. Uh, and she kind of like goes down and takes you down the corridor. I'm just going to quickly move you to the right spot. That's all right. He brings you back to um, the cage room. And brings you over to a doorway um, to the uh, it leads to the west, um, and says it's it's, it's 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 a long way round, but safer. We have not used this corridor for a long time, for they usually attack straight into the uh, the dragon hall, but we trapped it, so I thought best not to take you there. And you, uh, what was your name again? Hunk. What oh. was your name again, Meepu? Uh, <laughs> Meepu. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Meepu. <laughs> you did well, um, Doggy, was it? Yes, that is correct. I know it must have hurt your goblin psyche to, uh, not to respond in a place like that. Maybe you haven't met all goblins, people. Oh, and the friendship was the journey itself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as, um, yeah, you see like this, and uh, you see his eyes sort of change. And he's like, that will be, that is yet to be seen. As he doesn't quite trust you yet. Okay, so that's. I don't think we're going to get to anything else in the next 20 minutes. So I think we should maybe finish there for today. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, there you go. We're back. Um, so, uh, so thank you for that, for getting through the first part of uh, this first level of this first story on the very second episode <laughs> of uh, War Deep, More Rats Tales from the Unicorn Portal. Um, again, thank you for people's patience to staying with us, uh, even through our technical difficulties. Um, and of course, I'm just going to say, uh, stay stay safe, don't kill all the goblins you see, and all the people too. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much, guys. Um, and we'll thank see you, you next thank week. You. Um, next Monday, 4 to 7, on all these channels that you've been watching this time around. <laughs>